So in this video, we break down how a servo works and what it exactly is. Component by component, we will actually show you exactly what it is. So starting off, what I want to show you is a video of actual an actual servo actually running, and then we're going to break down each component. So make sure you stay you know stay tuned to the end of the video, and you'll get to see exactly each component and it has as it's getting broke down like piece by piece. So first off, we'll start off with showing this really short video of how a servo works. Now as it starts, um, this is a system that I have at the house um, and that I built. So it was an old system that got thrown away and basically I pieced it together to get a system running. Um, I'm running a cam profile basically back and forth. Um, just different cams um, and showing the start and stop of the system. If you're not familiar with a servo, uh, the servo is exactly uh, like a, it's just a, a stator, uh, a rotor, and then an encoder on the back of it. And what the, the, uh, Basically what the encoder does is it's lined up exactly with the rotor itself and it's done with an oscilloscope to know exactly when the positioning is correct. So the system in, in, in whole is a smart motor. So um, this is one of the most uh, well-known used motors for like system controls and stuff of that nature where you really need critical uh, positioning and stuff of that nature. And while this, the power is off of it, you're able to turn the, um, the motor shaft, the rotor. Um, with the power on, you're not allowed to, I mean, you won't be able to turn the, as it shows right there, you won't be able to turn that. So uh, we'll go ahead and skip to the next, um, and that, that just shows it, it running again. We'll go ahead and skip to the next part of this. So uh, in the next slide, what um, basically an Allen Bradley servo is. Uh, in this instance, we're going to show a uh, Allen Bradley servo with a brake. Um, the brake uh, got broken um, and br broke down each component. Uh, so, and then we got a little guy down here saying, uh, so exactly what is a servo um, and what are the components? This is exactly, um, you know, it, uh, a servo motor with a brake, right? So the brake connections are on the right. The motor connections are on the in the middle, and the encoder connection is on the left-hand side. And we'll get, don't worry, we're going to show each component of this actually broke down piece by piece. So again, uh, we'll come down to the next one. Uh, again, the, the motor itself has a retaining ring holding the uh, front bearing in. Um, that's what holds the, the front bearing in place and actually holds the stator kind of steady. Um, it has one on the front, one on the back. So um, as far as it's like a compression fit. So um, this is this portion down here. Um, so you need a special tool to actually get that out. First and foremost, when you when you're doing this, that's the probably the first thing you want to get out. So just know that, that that's there on the back of the motor. You have a dust cover, which is more along the lines of keeping the encoder clean because it's a glass encoder most of the time. And it's keeping the uh, encoder clean and along the, the same lines is protecting it from the ac actual something hitting the encoder itself and actually breaking it. So, and again, we have our little little guy down here uh, saying, come on, man, get rid of, get us to the nuts and bolts of it, right? Uh, and I know, you know, you guys are really interested in it. So, um, the encoder is, uh, in this instance, um, happens to be an analog analog encoder so it's an analog device and uh, most servo motors use this unless it is the new style which is a single cable the single cable motors like uh, it's a Rockwell VPL motor um, basically uh, you know it's just a uh, it's like a one and a zero all the time it's basically like a back to a binary system where a encoder uh, like a hyperface encoder which this is a hyperface uh, multi-turn encoder has a, a sine and cosine so um, you basically have an analog signal running back knowing the position and its absolute position of the uh, the uh, servo motor itself so to explain this a little bit closer you have the encoder on the back side you have a um, a bolt that goes through to hold 
the uh, center of the encoder, which actually is a glass encoder. If you if you were to open this up and like break it down, uh, it's in the center of this is a uh, an encoder, and it basically has little dials on it, and it reads the uh, like a little laser, and it kind of reads it. So, um, but this throughput, uh, this little shaft area right here, where the 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 bolt goes through to bolt it up, is actually uh, compression fit. It actually has a specific uh, little like cone shape. It's like taper down into the stator shaft or in the the rotor shaft, and it actually holds it in there. So. If you notice, they use Loctite and tighten it down, and it's a pretty snug fit. So when you're taking this off, you'll see that. Also, that there's a retaining ring that's holding the encoder steady as well. So we'll go to the next and look exactly uh, how that's done. So this, this picture right here actually shows the bolts taken out of the, um, the outside ring that holds the encoder in place. So uh, not, not necessarily in place, but it holds it like uh, from moving left to right. So if that makes um, a little bit more sense, the thing that holds it in place. So you have a center bolt that holds it in and then you have the outside ring that holds it from moving left and right. And along the lines of a servo, this servo motor itself and um, again, servos with brakes, uh, they mostly use 24 volt coils, uh, especially if they're, they're Rockwell or Allen Bradley servos. They use 24 volt coils. So if you apply the 24 volt DC voltage to the coil then you're able to move the um, actual rotor you're actually able to move the shaft of the motor itself and until you do that though the you won't be able to actually move it which was the case in this um, this failure we actually had the uh, the brake actually fail so um, what it did it did not uh, the coil didn't wasn't able to to uh, pull in and basically it didn't come off the back face and it, it couldn't turn. So in that turn, we cut it on, tried to run it. When we tried to run it, it uh, actually knew it had a position error because it, it knew it was trying to run. And it, it sensed that it couldn't from the encoder. So it went ahead and uh, gave a position error. Again, this was a, a system that uh, was a real tight tolerance. So uh, to give the back the illustration of what this... Uh, basically the top housing up here again the upper uh, in the middle picture right here we have the upper right hand corner of that that is the DC connection for the brake the, the two blue wires so that's where the 24 volt gets applied again this is just a coil so uh, it doesn't matter which two wires you know which uh, polarity you have it's gonna work but of course it's a it's a standard Rockwell cable so um, you, it's probably hard to get it wrong because it's only got to plug in one one direction. You have, in the center connection, you have your motor leads. Um, that's where the motor lead, leads are going to the actual uh, stator, and they have the uh, ground hooked to that as well. Now, in the uh, far left hand uh, on the side, you have the encoder. Um, basically, all of this is is the uh, basically like a wiring harness. So you have this plug right here. It goes to another plug down in the bottom of the encoder, and you will actually see this in a different slide. And this is just the wiring harness from here to there. So it basically takes the cable that you're going to plug into it, and it jumps it from here to the encoder. And it's a little bit better uh, shown in this uh, top view on the far right-hand corner. So um, with the top section taken out, um, with the you can see that what I was saying was the connection actually um, the cable connection connects to this and then it jumps down to the actual plug and then in this case I've actually taken it loose um, so that the plug is actually taken loose and, and again that's um, that's basically where where we are but you have to take this loose because you have these bolts right here so you have to take the brake side or in this case the brake um, and you have to take the encoder off, uh, the encoder plug at least, to get to this bolt to be able to take this this top housing off. And that's the reason why I'm you know I'm actually showing this. So if you're ever taking it off, just know you have to take that off because you have a screw right here, and you have four screws holding this in. Okay, so um, in this instance, you know I already took this off, so you can actually see the top of the encoder 
and you see where that plug was. Um, that's the where well, you know where that that plug kind of um, that wiring harness kind of just plugs into the encoder, and then that's that makes that connection. Now, when we get to talking about the brake, uh, the brake coil is right here, right? So in the back of the motor shaft itself. This so before we took the encoder off, this is on the far uh, left-hand corner uh, picture, and that's basically before we took the the encoder off. Now, when we took the encoder off, this back plate could come off. This black back uh, plate right here actually contacts. It's actually press fit in here, so it contacts this um, this brake, and when it contacts the brake, you're not. It, you're not allowed to turn, well, I wouldn't say you're not allowed to. You can't turn the motor, uh, the rotor shaft itself because basically the compression is in there, right? So that if this disc right here is against this disc, it, you know, you can't turn it. So when you power that up, it releases, it actually pulls it out again from, a, from making contact on, on the surface area right here. And then that enables you to actually turn the shaft. So if that makes uh, makes sense. And it honestly, this is probably the weakest part of this motor. I've never seen, uh, and if it's set right, you'll very rare, rarely see a, uh, a stator go out on a servo motor. You will probably most, I mean, the most like frequent thing you're going to see is probably a bad encoder. Uh, something heating up, uh, you probably will not see uh, the actual stator itself, and I'll show you that in the, in the next few slides. You'll, you won't never see that probably go out, or the rotor itself either, for that matter. But in this, in the middle slide right here, this is the brake housing, so, um, and we'll show that actually taken completely out here in the next few slides. This uh, on the far right hand corner, this is the uh, encoder. It's a Stigman Hyperface encoder. Uh, it's powered by 7 to 12 volts, and that is, again, that's an analog encoder. So that's what that looks like, and that's the retaining ring and everything that's there. So um, now that we got to, you know, the nuts and bolts of that, um, the brake is attached to the, you know, the actual, um, the actual motor shaft, right? So um, the motor shaft is you know what goes in that's basically the rotor itself right and then the stator is inside here and you can see the the stator is inside the bell housing and it basically has the wires coming out it's still attached so the coil is actually what tells these magnets right here that it you know tells it to go around in, in the firing order right so basically and this back section right here is the brake itself and this is what I was talking about pulling in. You see this air gap right here? This air gap is what pulls in. You can see it a lot better in this far right hand corner um, picture. This, uh, you have the bearing right here. Uh, so if I took this bearing off, I could take the, uh, the DC coil, which is the brake coil. I could take it completely off. But you see this air gap right here. That's what pulls in and allows that to, that brake to actually come off of that back, um, housing that we show right here right so this is what actually gets rubbed on and you can almost see a wear pattern on it right so um just know that that's that's what that does right so it, it just pulls in and pulls out or you know when it cuts on it pulls in and then when it cuts off it you know it pops back out and you can't turn it this is actually again the rotor shaft um this is uh again what is called the rotor um, itself because it has magnets you know attached to it and these are rare earth magnets so, so that's really really strong in a servo motor you have really really strong magnets so um, again the likelihood of them going out is pretty rare I'm not saying they can't but uh, you would really have to be abusing, uh, abusing the motor the uh, all the components of the the servo itself now just breaking down to the um, getting down to the end of everything is basically you have your um, your rotor itself, right? Now, and we in this case we have our brake attached to our rotor because we didn't take it off. Um, I didn't take the back bearing off, so I didn't take the um, the coil, the motor, or the the brake coil off. So, but just know that from here to here and right here is the uh, this is the motor shaft, 
and the the shaft actually has the the rotor on it again this this rotor is just a, a group of magnets that's put in a certain placement that allows it when it goes into the stator itself allows it to uh, turn in a certain direction depending upon the firing order and how they actually or how you actually wire up the stator itself again um, the encoder goes on the very back of the stator or not the stator but the uh, rotor itself then and again this is that makes the system uh, it's it's put on there with an oscilloscope so that again you look at when you when you define where it's at you line up the the stator to a certain spot or the rotor to a certain spot and then you actually move the encoder and and dial it in with a, a oscilloscope and get it perfectly aligned and then you're able to bolt it back up but i will say this to caution to the wind that you cannot just change an encoder out just because you think it's bad you can't just change it out without having an oscilloscope you have to hook the oscilloscope up to the encoder and know the exact position and there's a there's a process to actually dialing that in so uh, without actually breaking that down uh, a lot further we're going to go ahead you know and, and pretty much in this video but what I wanted to know is get your thoughts on um, what you think, you know, and <laughs> we got the little guy down here again saying, why didn't I just say that from the start? Um, but as far as that goes, um, you know, what are your thoughts, you know, as far as this is like servos? What, are, what is your experiences? Have you had experiences like this, you know, where you've had the most common part of the servo with um, like a brake servo? Um, the most common part is the brake going out. Are, are what are your experiences as far as you know uh, servos themselves I mean I've had uh, myself I've worked with servos quite a bit and this is why I kind of wanted to throw this this uh, PowerPoint together and just kind of show everyone because I, I kind of want to get the community involved a lot more and I'd really like to know your feedback so um, again let me know your thoughts you know type them below or contact me uh, email me go to my website are um, and also join my Facebook group too as well the uh, online PLC support you can join it as well and there's a lot of good content in there you know and it, it gets um, more the more people that are get involved in that Facebook group I think is that you know it grows just to be better and better so that we can all kind of share with each other but again um, let me know your thoughts you know just type them uh, below and uh, really would like to hear from you you know see what you guys think all right. Well, thank you for, um, you know, being part of the channel. And if this is your first video watching this, uh, make sure you, uh, you know, subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.